Are you all ready? Yeah, I guess y'all can. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Good evening, everyone. This is a special meeting of Yellow Springs Village Council. It is uh, February 13th. Um, I welcome everyone. Um, and I, you may, many of you probably already know, um, it's not the meeting we wanted to have because we did expect to have the final report um, ready from the investigator. We do not have that final report. Um, we met in executive session Friday with Mr. Williamson and he asked very um, forcefully for a, uh, for a delay. He just said he wasn't ready. He actually is still in the process of interviewing people. We pushed that date. We wanted, because of the fact that we um, canceled the January 30th meeting, we didn't want to cancel another meeting. So we made the decision um, that we, we really pushed him. He asked at that point for more time. We pushed him and asked him to hold on the February 13th. But if the report isn't complete, we don't want incomplete information out there. We don't want to find out that we're releasing information that we find after he's interviewed more people that the facts are different. So in, for, for complete caution, to make sure that we, um, that we get all the information out, we are just going to delay. Um, I think it's, it's possible that we're going to be able to, to release part of the report at the um, February 21st meeting. Um, we're still in, in discussion about that. Um, and, and there are, there are some um, uh, other investigations that may be going on. So things are, um, things are happening um, potentially in parallel. You all know that we've made significant progress with the hiring of inter interim chief Brian Carlson, who is making cultural and procedural changes within the PD. He's reaching out to the community and establishing an expectation with his officers to do the same. The Justice System Task Force, their subgroups, the 365 group and others are working on various areas to move our police department and mayor's court to one that reflects our community and its values and stands as a model for the rest of the country. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna hear from Mr. Williamson. I'm gonna introduce him. He's going to talk about the process that he's been involved in and will continue to be involved in. We'll come back to council, see if there are any comments or questions. Then we'll open it up to citizens to make comments and questions. But just to, we will let you know that we may not be able to answer all of those questions. Um, the, the facilitators will explain the process uh, when we turn it over to the community. At this point, I just ask that everybody um, silence their uh, cell phones. Um, so uh, David Williamson is an attorney and partner with the law firm of Beezer, Greer, and Landis. Mr. Williamson's practice consists primarily of business and commercial litigation, professional practice representation, and white collar work. In the 80s, he served as an assistant Montgomery County public defender and common pleas court civil magistrate from 1984 to 1987. He joined the firm of Beezer, Greer, and Landis in 1988 and became a partner in 1992. He's received numerous professional awards and has the highest rating for attorneys. Mr. Williamson lives in the city of Dayton and is quite active with business, professional, arts, and cultural organizations. He's also involved in community theater and has received awards for his stage acting. Mr. Williamson is currently serving as special counsel for the city of Riverside and has served in the same capacity for several other government agencies. Dave, I will turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Karen. Um, uh, what Karen told you is uh, the fact that uh, I think a lot of you were expecting a report tonight, but uh, I will take full responsibility. I just need more time. And here's kind of, kind of the reasons why. Let me tell you what we have done and what we still need to do yet. Uh, during the course of our investigation so far, we have interviewed uh, all of the police officers who were on duty on New Year's Eve, uh, other members of the police department who were not on duty, former police chiefs, uh, the village manager. We've talked to over uh, 30 or more of you. I see a number of familiar faces in the crowd of people I've talked to, and you've talked to me and or my associate Matt 
Matt Swellentrop is my associate from our firm, and Matt's been assisting me and uh, talking with uh, a lot of you. Uh, the interviews have been conducted both in person and by telephone. Uh, and again, they've lasted uh, anywhere from as short as a half of an hour. Some of them have lasted up to three hours. And I would just guesstimate that the average length of interview has been an hour to an hour and a half long. Uh, we've also uh, been in the process of reviewing cruiser cams. Uh, from that evening, body cams from the police officers who, from other jurisdictions who responded that evening. Um, dispatch records, radio traffic records and recordings, numerous cell phone recordings that a number of citizens made that evening. Those are still coming in to us. We don't I don't know and can't tell you right now if we have all of them. And, um, uh, and sometimes we get some from some of you and we, we've already got that one. Or we get one and, oh no, that's a new one. We haven't got that one yet. So that's been ongoing. Um, we've looked at uh, videos uh, from prior years, uh, New Year's Eve ball drops. Uh, we've looked at internal police reports, including the narrative reports of each officer on duty, photographs, written witness statements, uh, and affidavits. Uh, we have reviewed the village charter, personnel policy, the Yellow Springs Police Department General Operations Manual, and a number of relevant sections of the Ohio Revised Code. Uh, we have also begun and continue to look at some comparative police practice and procedure standards and guidelines from other jurisdictions. Uh, although we have maintained a dialogue with the Office of the Greene County Prosecuting Attorney, we have made no recommendations to that office and will not in our final report regarding criminal charges against any individual. Uh, the institution of criminal charges remains the sole province of the prosecuting attorney under Ohio law. Uh, we have also been in dialogue with attorneys who are representing various individuals, some are, who are here tonight. And although uh, we may be asked to comment upon the actions of individual employees of the village, uh, again, we will not make recommendations with regards to any disciplinary or employment action uh, we, we're just making findings of fact. Those uh, activities remain the province of uh, the village manager. Um, the fact is that it is my practice. I've been practicing for 39 years, and it is uh, my druthers to be precise, to be complete, to be accurate in my reporting, and I just don't think we're there yet. The other thing that we want to make sure that we do is to be inclusive. Um, uh, the village manager has put out, both on social media as well as in the uh, Yellow Springs newspaper, that if anyone in the community wishes to talk to us, and we welcome that, um, to give us a call. And that's part of why we need more time, because um, here's a good thing about your community. You're very involved. You, know? You're, you people are interested and have something to say. And so to give everybody a chance to be heard, because the last thing I want is for the end of this process to come and someone to say, well, nobody asked me. Well, step forward and, and speak now or forever hold your peace. And we still are doing that. A number of you that I've already talked to, you know that we end almost every one of our interviews with, with this question. Is there anybody else you would recommend that we talk to? And uh, everybody has given us a list of names of other people that we should talk to. And we've been, so that has, multiplied our list of names 
and we still just haven't gotten through that list and gotten back to talk to everybody. And rather than rush and get you something and then we've still got this number of people that we haven't talked to, um, I impressed on council and, and they, um, they didn't want to hear it, but I impressed on them, no, this, this is really the better way to go. You don't want to roll out a, an executive order or an independent investigation too early and let's make sure it's done right. So I take the responsibility for that and I ask for your patience in that regard as well. Um, so uh, I am going to work with the, the village manager and with council to establish a new timeline. And again, I, again, I will tell you, I, we were still interviewing people as uh, late ago as, as last evening. So we still have some follow-up to do. We still have some documents and some uh, uh, records and reports to ask for and to review, and uh, we're just not there yet. So uh, I give you my apologies, and I uh, request your indulgence and your patience for just a little bit longer so we can get this wrapped up. Thank you, Ms. President. Thanks, Dave. Um, so, Council, do we want to um, hear from citizens now, take this opportunity. So I will turn it over. I'm, I'm going blank. Your turn. It's our turn? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Sarah Wallace, and I'm a volunteer mediator and facilitator with the Village Mediation Program here in Yellow Springs. Um, we're always looking for volunteers, so if you want to talk to me later. But the role that I have in tonight is uh, with Laura Ellison, is your uh, community facilitators for this evening. And we're going to mirror a process that we used in previous meetings, which is use the two podiums in the center of the room. We ask that um, you line up behind if you have a comment or question. But please note that at this time, Council may not be able to answer all of your questions or respond directly to comments, but they are here to listen and they have set up this forum to do that. So we'll have about, each speaker will have about three minutes, and uh, Laura is going to be our uh, timekeeper this evening. So if you hear an alarm or she, you know, she has her phone with her, or if she uh, motions to you, just wind up your thought and let the next person go. Um, I think that's it. Did I miss anything? Nope. All right. So if you have a, a comment or question about this evening, podium's yours. Good evening, my name is Jim Bailey. I've lived in the village since 1971. I want to commend the council for doing this investigation. I have confidence that ultimately the village will correct the problems with our police department and make it the kind of department that it has been in the past. So I look forward to that. I have one question for the investigator and then also a, a broad plea. Um, is your charge just to figure out what happened, or will you be making recommendations going forward? Um, that's a good question. It is my understanding I will be making recommendations. Okay. I will. Good. Um, the concern that I have is that other police departments were involved in this action. I think we can have a really good police department here. But I'm not as confident about departments in the vicinity. I worry particularly about Beaver Creek. I think everyone here knows why. We also obviously have to have a relationship with the county sheriff due to the way the jurisdictions work. So what I would like to see going forward is a clear understanding of who can call in other departments, what criteria are applied in that situation and which departments are we in fact going to use uh, to assist our own department that's my question I'm not anticipating an answer now thank you thanks Jim. thank you Jim my turn um, 
High turnover within the department over the past three years and the inappropriate aggressions a senior officer displayed in the fall of 2015 against a villager have served to undermine the rebuilding of trust and policing within our community, several uh, residents have said. The community should continue to remain engaged and us as active members of that community in policing affairs until our officers can be seen as allies and part of our community. Funds should be allocated to hire social workers who very much take the form of village officers but who are focused on creating reachable solutions in the mundane commonly found village conflicts such as those seen in the weekly village newspaper. The YSPD has a select group of core officers Carlson, Meister, and Nibber, who provide a philosophical leadership model for our, our officers new to our community. A commission of well-behaved trained officers should be in uh, charge of leading a professional force of reasonable discretion and response control. Trust and community awareness is essential to de-escalating and connecting police with uh, local issues. Officer John K. Whittemore has uh, recently been dismissed and had served as a former police officer for 16 years prior to his employment in the village in West Carrollton Police Department. July 5, uh, 2016, Whitmore illegally incarcerated a walking pedestrian for 30 days held with no contact or bail because he was on probation. Uh, months prior, Whitmore smashed a woman's windshield while she was sleeping in her car. We believe that Whitmore did not receive the adequate training to address and de-escalate situations that could have been dealt with much more professionally despite having good intentions from the start. This is a quote from him. Um, the area holds a special place in my heart, he said. I'm going to give the village the best service I can. And that was his hiring statement that spring. I propose that a uh, community department staff page is created so our active duty officers can be identified and accountable to the community they operate in. We could cut the village department by funding by half and still continue to fund over a million dollars for public safety. Our village does not need to mimic the militarization effects of our nation. According to the Human Relations Commission member, Joan Chappelle, in 2015, um, a local news report, the police have sometimes morphed into a more aggressive force of officers prone to stopping people with little cause and profiling at least two, two groups, African Americans and youth. It is in our best interests, interests of everyone in our community and the police department to continue to remain active in the support of Interim Chief Carlson and his mission to shape a new wave of community policing in our village. Can we get your name for the record? Uh, Jacob Woodburn. Jacob Thank you. With a K. Yeah. Thank you, Jacob. Hi, I'm Donna Silvert. I have a simple question. How much money are we allocating for this investigation? It wasn't in the budget. I mean, it, it, we, we don't allocate for unexpected circumstances, um, but we feel that, the, that we need to expend the resources that are required to get the investigation done and to get the information out to the citizens. Dan Kerrigan. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Wills, I appreciate the thoroughness that you're going through this investigation, but I would like to say, given uh, your, um, your path and the way it continues to sort of spiral on, that I'm going to recommend to the council that there should be a firm deadline. Uh, completeness is one thing, but on the other side, we do not need a rational, I'll use a thematic, you know, theme um, of how everything looks from different viewpoints. We do need to try get to a point, and um, I'm a little disappointed that you haven't been able to get to it. I understand these things happen, and I wish it would have been notified. We would have the community as well as the council would have been notified early. And I wish the council would make a decision to sort of bound this thing because otherwise it could go on and on. I mean, if more questions are asked by more and more people, this is starting to get, you know. I think the event is already pretty well documented 
and you, someone needs to make a decision and make some judgments from that. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Just a reminder to introduce yourself when you uh, I did say come Dan up to the Kerrigan, microphone. didn't I? Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Dorothy Bouquet. I actually want to follow up with Dana's question and ask how much is this costing us so far, the investigation? Do we have a quote? Or, uh, Mr. Williamson, do you know how much the bill will be for the village so far? I don't know that yet. Um, I am in, probably in the process, and I guess I'm going to have to defer to my bookkeeper back at my firm. Mm -hmm. um, so I really. I would really be hesitant to even give you a ballpark at, at this point, um, other than to say that we have spent a lot of time, two of us, mm -hmm. as you've heard uh, the number of people that we've talked to, the number of things that we've reviewed and continue to do so, and um, the village is paying us by the hour, and um, so uh, I'll be in a better position probably as we get closer to the end of this month to be able to give a, a more definite response to that. How many lawyers or any of your employees have been working on that? The, two, the two of us, and then we have support staff in the firm. Okay. So, but just two attorneys. Two attorneys, thank you. Hi, my name is Anita Brown. I've lived in the village for about 26 years. I had hoped to be here the last time you convened, but I wasn't able to be here and, um, in thinking about it, and I did speak with the investigators, but in um, thinking about it further, there were a couple of points that I felt were really important to me, um, having to do with the demeanor and the character that I witnessed that night. Um, I will say that in the 20 to 25 minutes or so, from the time that the police officers got out of the car and were walking in the street, not once, did I hear any of them say, you need to leave, folks, time to go home, got to clear the streets, not once. My husband was with me. He had no recollection of that either. Um, what I did witness was, I will say I have never been, I've never been so afraid in my village as I was that night. And it was because of the faceless, emotionless, absolute no sense of caring, um, staunch, hard demeanor on the part of these officers. And I witnessed a lot of villagers trying to de-escalate and officers trying to escalate. And it was so strange because it seemed so backwards. But that's exactly what was happening from my standpoint. Um, I witnessed taunting on the part of the officers. What I didn't hear was, you need to leave. What I did hear was, not tonight, not happening, in that kind of a voice, talking to somebody. And the last thing I will share is that I started to go home. I came back down because my daughter was there. And I was standing on the fringe of a circle, and this officer was talking to somebody. And I was, had my hands on my cheeks and tears in my eyes, and he turned around and he looked at me, and he gave me the most awful smile. It just cut to my core, and I know that I could never have a positive interaction with that man. And I will say that as far as the, uh, the reinforcements, the other jurisdiction police officers, in retrospect, I tend to think that they are the ones who de-escalated it, that it was because of them, in particular, Officer uh, Sheriff Nippard, um, because it was their engagement with them that caused them to finally disperse. So maybe it wasn't a bad thing that they were there. Um, anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Shonda Sneed. Um, I have a very simple question. While we're waiting on the report, um, what is going to be done so that maybe the people in Yellow Springs will feel more comfortable? Is there any, anything planned so that maybe the police chief and um, the officers, that there's some kind of dialogue between the, the community? I know for myself, um, I would really feel, I mean, um, 
course, I really don't know the police chief. And um, I think there's, you know, so I think that would set a lot of people at ease. Um, I've lived here for 40 something years and the first time I really feel uncomfortable in my own town. And I shouldn't feel that, you know, being uncomfortable and people who we're paying to protect us. So is, you know, is there something? Uh, when, when the citizen input section is over, then we would like uh, Chief Carlson to speak, talk about things that have been going on, that ideas he's had, things he's implemented already within the department. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pat Dewey's. Uh, Mr. Williamson, I heard you say uh, some things you would not be recommending related to um, discipline or personnel, and then it seemed like you would be making some recommendations. Could you clarify the type of recommendations that would be coming out of your report? Um, sure. Um, some recommendations with regard to this event and uh, to, plan the, to the reoccurrence of the New Year's Eve ball drop. Is that what you're? Yes. Yes. And um, and things related to uh, village uh, resources. With regard Could you give an example meeting? about village resources that you might be addressing? Um, well, right now uh, you have an event that is, uh, it is just the police officers who were there that night. And so we have a, a question, should there be any other department or any other resources devoted to the event in any way. I see. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. My name is Chrissy Cruz, and that really disturbs me because one of the things I said at the last meeting, we've had this ball drop for many, many years. The ball drop has never been a problem. And because the police department messed it up, now we're going to get recommendations to change the ball drop. It's not broken. What's broken is the police department. We need to work on cleaning up the police department and fixing that. The ball drop, there's nothing that needs to change about that. It's a little community event that we go downtown and we meet all our friends and neighbors and we watch this silly little lit up ball drop. We all say Happy New Year, glad to see you, and then we go home or go off to our parties. Nothing needs to be fixed about the ball drop. The police department is what needs to be fixed. Hello, uh, Tom Dietrich, I'm resident here in Yale Springs, and uh, I am disappointed that there is no report to uh, the final, final investigation tonight. But since we're all here, I did want to just take a minute to um, say that I appreciate the council and staff and all the effort that they've put into trying to make this right. And um, I think we're all counting on you <laughs> to, uh, to, to get there, to bring it home. So, you know, it is kind of dragging on, like some folks have said, but we're going to get, uh, you know, a complete report and uh, we really look forward to getting uh, some results out of this. So again, thank you for your efforts. I really do appreciate it. It makes me proud to be part of this community. So thank you. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Berman, and I am a former member of the Justice System Task Force. Uh, Tuesday nights weren't good for me, so I had to step off, but I'm still involved. And I know it's, it's kind of rude to talk about money, so I apologize, but um, do you have any sense of the number of hours? 50, 100, 200? Any sense at all of a ballpark of hours that have been put in? I, I have to confess, I just haven't even looked yet. I, I haven't looked at the, uh, it's easy enough to do, but I haven't done it. So 
I, I again apologize for that. Um, because we've been involved in the investigation and, and doing that. So it's getting time for me to do that. But I would, I, I would really be hesitant to even give a ballpark to tell you that, uh, um, you know, because I, I just would rather check with my bookkeeper first to find out where we stand. But you've been working on this for a couple weeks, is that fair? No, no, probably since the, uh, the week after the event occurred, so probably the second week of January, so. Pretty much full time? But it's, but it's not been a full time, it's not, you haven't been has it been, No, it has not been, you know, every single day, uh, every day since then, but um, a significant number of hours. Uh -huh. um, and I also wanted to say that, uh, that the village made a great decision, I think, in hiring our interim chief, Brian Carlson. I think he's exactly what we're looking for. And he met with us as a small subgroup of the task force. And he, you know, he's exactly the kind of compassionate listener who's willing to look at things uh, from a fresh perspective extremely humble, extremely affable, wants to be out in the community. Um, so I'm, I'm really thrilled that he's our interim chief and I hope that maybe he'll become our full-time chief and we won't have to go through a long search with consultants and flying people in. I think we have someone really fine uh, amongst us. All right, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Karen, I was going to say, since that question's being asked, maybe we should just ask for a report that we could have at our next council meeting. And I also, you know, this is not at. an expense anybody is, is happy about. And as when I said it's not budgeted, it's we, you know, we have a budget for council legal um, expenses, and that's what this will come out of. Um, it's not expected that we have things like this happen. We felt, and we knew it was going to be an expense, we felt the importance of having an independent investigation outweighed the budgetary concerns. The community demanded and was demanding and we were demanding that we knew what happened. And this was the only way that we could uh, determine that was fair and equitable for, for this work to be done. So. Um, you know, we'll we'll come up with it. We'll come up with a number. We'll find out how much it costs. We'll let you know as soon as possible. But it at this point, the decision's been made. The work is ongoing, and we're not going to stop it because. And, and and I don't believe that Mr. Williamson is is taking advantage of the contract either. That is that is there is no there is no issue with that. If we get to the point, we we will put a put a deadline on it that gets to the point of appearing that it's not going to, to be done, then we will talk about that. But that, that point hasn't come yet. Sorry. Uh, my name is Alan Brunsman. I've lived in this town since 68. Yes, I am that old. Um, I have two things. One, which just came out of this last little bit of discussion here. I've managed probably, I don't know, 50 to 100 scientists and uh, they always give me answers like these lawyers do, and also have managed about 10 lawyers. So the point I would ask for them right now is by the end of the week, you give me a summary. Thank you. And that would be the end of the dialogue. Then you would know where you are. You don't go on now without knowing where you are, okay? And it doesn't, you know, okay, it, he says his account, it's a separate person doing it. We can have an accountant. He should have a number. Sorry, I just, that's where I would, if I was managing this. The other thing was, geez, sorry about that. The other thing was, I was out of town for the last four weeks, and I read the New York Times. In the front page, just below the fold, where was, what was there? Yellow Springs. And I'm 2,000 miles away. You know, I really didn't expect that in the New York Times. And I read that article, and my conclusion, which I hope that comes out of this, not my conclusion, my question, which comes out of this, is that isn't my Yellow Springs. And I'm not talking about the police. 
I'm just talking about the feelings of the towns, the black, white, whatever you want to call it, that isn't my Yelva Springs. What's happened? And actually, my wife, who knows the town a lot better since she taught here for 40-some years, and that, yeah, that is my wife, uh, she said that things like that not are happening. No, I'm not claiming that anything like that is happening. I'm claiming that the attitude has changed a little bit. And don't tell Becky I said this, obviously. <laughs> uh, so again, my question is, has something happened in the proportions of people and other things that have changed some of the attitudes in town? And again, that's, that's my question. It's not the police department. The police department, yeah, I think there's something screwed up there and so on and so forth, and we'll clean, straighten that out. But is, has Yellow Springs changed? And I'm more interested than that because I've lived here for a long time, and I have many friends of different relations, <laughs> everything. So I'm worried, okay? That's, that's all I have. Hey, Madam President, if I may respond. I will be glad to give an interim bill to the city or village manager by the end of the week. I Thank think that's you. fair. I, I'm sorry? A summary of where your findings are at and, and let me elaborate on, on that a little bit and, and on the nature of, of this investigation. Um, those of you who were there New Year's Eve, there were a lot of people. Um, I don't think I'm saying anything out of turn to say that the, 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 there was a, a, a mood of confusion and chaos at a certain point. And um, when you do an investigation like this, you do find people who saw something. And then you find somebody else who saw the same thing, but it's a different it, and, and so now we have to go back and either corroborate a fact or to try to resolve contradictory facts. And sometimes we've just got one fact and we're not real sure where it fits in. And so that's the reason that we wish to be complete. It would be easy to do the summary, but that doesn't necessarily give you the full picture. If I may, the, the old proverb about the three blind men with the elephant. I mean, you may just have, I can give you the summary of the one man who's holding on to the leg who's going to tell you that's what an elephant is. But I've got to also talk to the other guys who are holding the tail in the trunk. And that's why I've requested more time, and that's why I'm hesitant to do a summary without having a complete picture and to have as many people who do have something to tell me to tell me and then I'm going to give you my report. My name is David Turner. Um, you guys are making this way too complicated. Um, like way too complicated. I know everybody is working in good faith to respond and do good things, but I mean, we're all grown-ups here. Officer Krupke screwed up. He started the New Year's Eve shutdown too soon and didn't communicate. People reacted. Some people might have reacted a little poorly, more poorly than they should have, but not surprisingly, you get a bunch of people together drinking and partying late at night. What do you expect? So you got to cut them some slack. So I would suggest that you say that, have the police chief chew out, off, chew out Officer Krupke and his buddies and the rest of the people and say, stop being idiots, and then we move on. I know you worked hard, but... I think what you're going to report is going to effectively be fairly pointless in the grand scheme of things. We should have another ball drop, actually. Thank you, Dave. Oh, Hi, my excuse name's me. Whoa, sorry. Hi, my name's Karen Gardner. Um, I'm a little confused about one thing. I'm not sure if I'm missing some information. Um, I know that Mr. Williamson is not making, I believe he's not making recommendations about disciplinary actions towards the police officers that evening. Um, and I'm wondering what's, what is being done about that? Is somebody doing an investigation that's going to lead 
to a recommendation about disciplinary actions. I know myself, um, I just want to say this one thing. I know we have some very good officers here. I've thought personally, because I interacted with the officers that evening, that if I were to be pulled over for speeding or something on, on the road right now, and it was one of those officers, I would feel very uncomfortable. Um, just because I was there trying to talk to them and they were hostile, I'm kind of memorable looking, so I think they'd remember me. And so I just want to know where, where we're at in terms of what those police officers are doing right now and if some decision is going to be made about disciplinary actions. I can answer that one, Karen. Okay. Um, given the current status of the investigation, um, even though it's ongoing, I believe there is probable cause to begin the, uh, the disciplinary investigation, and we will be doing that. And if there is found to be a violation of either the general orders manual, uh, general operations manual of the police department, or the village personnel policy manual, then I will take action based upon those violations. I can't tell you what that will be right now because I don't know what that internal investigation or disciplinary investigation may find. Do you know when that will be finished? It will, I don't know when it will be finished, um, but we are going to run them concurrently at this point. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Dorothy Buke. Um, I want to follow up on the comment that this gentleman made about the uh, New York Times article and some discussions I've had with fellow residents here. I hear from a lot of white people in town disbelief that there would be any sort of discrimination against African American residents in this town. And I think that the least we should do here is actually ask ourselves if there, if there is white privilege in this town. I know, it's sarcastic here. <laughs> and, and if this is a problem that is especially predominant in the police department, and now I put all my trust in the appointment of Brian Carson to actually ask these tough questions, uh, to the police department, but I really think that the least we should do here is, is maybe be ready that the answer is that there is obviously white privilege in this town. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Matt. Um, what, last name, please. Oh, Raska, Raska. Um, and I just remember going to work the Tuesday after, and everyone at work wants to know what's going on, what happened in Yellow Springs. And then I meet up with people through the month, and they're asking me, oh, what happened in Yellow Springs on New Year's Eve? What happened? What happened? And then um, I got a new job um, a, a week ago, and they're still asking me. They're still asking, what happened? What happened? What happened? And I, I, I had a conversation um, on Saturday night, and the um, person I was talking to said something like, uh, uh, the... Yellow Springs Police Department is going to ruin that town. And I, I didn't know if he meant the culture or the real estate value or uh, the tourism, but I think he was probably right. Uh, Beth Bridgman. I, um, if you could just clarify, I think I, I, think I don't quite understand or misunderstood uh, Patty. So the investigation, the disciplinary investigation, has not yet begun, is that? Uh, it has not yet begun, but it will begin tomorrow, um, and it will run concurrently. Normal procedure is that you wait until the independent counsel has finished his investigation, but um, at this point I have enough information that there is probable cause to begin the, the disciplinary investigation. Thank you. Um, because the investigations are going to continue on, I just have a, a clarifying question. Patty, I know I asked you this, and you've been very busy. I asked you this today, so you may not have had a chance to respond. But because the investigators may also have a way in, I wanted to ask about this. Some of the public records, um, as long as there's an investigation, am I loud enough? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. As long as there's 
Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's uh, Athena Fannin. Also, you might see me online as Minerva Barker. I use both names. Um, <clears throat> as some of the public records, as long as there's an investigation, are, have, have not been being released. And uh, I guess I was kind of anticipating with the drop of this investigation that they would be released. And so I have a general question, a specific question. Um, uh, will those Will all of those public records that have been held, will they continue to be held, or will some of those be able to be released? And then the specific question is on the videos. Um, I did get some video, but I only got the, the portion that started halfway through the officer's reports. I didn't get the, the videos before, and the, the lights and sirens are on, so I would anticipate there were videos before that. Maybe there weren't. Um, so I guess that, that would be my question, if those videos exist and if they will be released now, or which records are going to continue to be held? Um, I am going to let an attorney answer that. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Chris Connard. I'm the village solicitor. Um, Athena, in answer to your question as it relates to uh, the ongoing investigation that's being conducted by Mr. Williamson, um, the I think what's likely to happen is that, uh, that the, uh, or certainly possible, is that the prosecutor may ask for that, those additional records because I'm not sure what the prosecutor has or doesn't have. So that could lead to a delay in the release of those records if it's considered to be a pending investigation that pertains to uh, how the prosecutor is going to view the criminal cases in light of any new evidence. Uh, as it pertains to uh, the question about the quality of the videos, well, there were some email exchanges today that I'm aware of, and I believe that the last email uh, from Patty indicated that uh, that that was something we were going to look into, and I think that there's some further communication that's going to probably take place on that. Jennifer Berman again. Um, this, is, this is the question that is really burning in my mind. And I don't know whether this falls under Mr. Williamson's investigation or Ms. Bates. Um, but the question I have is, why did this happen? What motivated the police to rush into the crowd? What were they thinking? Honestly, that's not a rhetorical question. I'm really curious about why they did what they did. So I guess my question to you two is, will either of you ask these officers why they did what they did? And is that something that we can then find out? Yes. My name is Ken Odiorn, and uh, I wasn't at the uh, event, but uh, uh, nor do I live in Yellow Springs right now, but um, I was born here, and I, I'm concerned about this. Um, I want to know about the uh, nature of the questions that were asked. You mentioned uh, that the um, police officers were questioned. Uh, but not in the context of a, a, a criminal uh, interrogation, uh, strikes me that the questions could bear on uh, an indictment or incrimination of some kind. Do we know, or could you tell, um, were their answers conditioned by uh, uh, desire not to incriminate themselves. Now, maybe you couldn't tell that, but I guess maybe the question I'm asking is, can you provide us, um, or I would ask that the council uh, see to it that, it that the report includes all of the questions that were answered uh, along with the answers to those questions. I'd like to see that. I'd also like to see um, uh, uh, the contract that the charge to the investigator, uh, the, the nature, the, the written text of the contract, um, uh, because that sort of states the question of what we're looking at, what we're looking for. Um, um, 
I'm, I'm concerned also, I wanted to say, about the uh, person who on that night was uh, charged or later charged with a felony. Um, I think that our village should um, move strongly to um, eliminate those charges and to, to free that person from what was pretty clearly uh, excessive use of, of force, um, inappropriate. I think that person should be cleared immediately. I want to see council work on that. I want to hear what they're doing. Um, obviously, I'm disappointed that uh, we don't have a report. I would think that it would be professional to uh, know days in advance that you're not going to make the mark so that we can not all be gathered here, nice as it is to have this occasion. Every time that we meet, fewer people will show up and it erodes the quality of the conversation, it erodes the value of the investigation. Um, so. <laughs> so, I want to see a copy of the contract. I'd like for Mr. Williamson to send us an invoice tomorrow um, and uh, along with a, a copy of the contract to see if um, we can't expedite this. Um, um, I too, like Jim Bailey, feel that we will get this right and I thank everyone here for their commitment and contrition, um, especially on Jerry's part. I never was prouder of my village when everyone showed up here after this situation and um, that we realized what we were up against. And I, I think that, I think that what happened was not just a screwed up uh, police action. Uh, it was apparently a cultural, a, a planned strike in a cultural war. Maybe that, you might think that puts it too strongly, but, um, it, but it's the kind of thing that doesn't need uh, a collusion of any kind. Uh, Time's up. The, the attitudes of the police uh, were going on for quite some time uh, in evidence, and I noticed that. Um, I, guess, I guess that was all on my list. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Bill Farrar, um, villager, father of adult, they're, they're children to me. Um, some eight months ago I approached the council uh, at a council meeting, um, a little stirred up, and I came in to advocate for an age group of people that are sparsely not here. Um, they, don't, they don't come here. And, um, and I thought, you know, here I am, the middle-aged white male who's pretending to be middle class, and I can advocate for these kids who don't feel like the cops are a resource. And so I stood at a podium just like this up in the council chambers and said something to that effect and, and really implored that we don't have time to waste. We've got to shit or get off the pot and stop thinking so much. And I'm an egghead. And so um, I... To echo what others have said, that I, I understand that the glacial pace doesn't feel glacial when you're following procedures and when you're being very cautious and when you're trying to gather all the information, but I am madly in love with a bunch of kids, young adults, who reflect back to me that that doesn't feel like a glacial pace. It feels like an avoidant abandonment. It doesn't feel like a glacial pace of government. It feels like a failure of culture. And maybe you're not the right body to fix the problem, but you're the body I have in front of me. And so I'm imploring on behalf of that age group that really, I'm one of the younger folks in this room. I'm pushing 50, come on. These guys, the people I'm advocating for don't feel like this is gonna happen for there are some younger people in here, I'm not saying that, but it's, we, I, I love the Justice Task Force, I love that this council entertains this conversation, it doesn't happen in other little towns, I'm from other little towns in my past, and it doesn't happen, this is glorious, it's amazing, and it's not yet good enough.
That's what I got. Thank you. Chrissy Cruz, and I have a couple more questions after some of this discussion. My understanding is that the officer that was in charge is on paid administrative leave right now. Is that true? And then we're paying these attorneys to do this investigation. Is somebody going to set a timeline on how long this goes on? Because this is causing the village an awful lot of money. And you, and you can wait for witnesses to come forward, and they'll still be coming forward next New Year's Eve. We'll still have people straggling in. People that were there that night are from all over. They're not all just from Yellow Springs. So are we going to put a timeline on how long we're going to let this drag out and maybe even a cap on how much money we're going to spend on this investigation when there's video, there's testimony. I mean, it's really, it really is not that great big giant of a puzzle to be throwing all this money away. So I would just like to know about that. Any other questions? Minerva, or, oh, excuse me, Laura. My name is Laura Curlis, and I, with John Paul Ryan, represent David Carlson. And I have a question about how do you intend to make findings of fact which involve credibility determinations as to who's telling the truth and who isn't? Uh, that's an excellent question. And when we run into an issue where we have one person saying the traffic light was red and another person saying the traffic light was green, then I will report that exactly what I just said. I will not necessarily make the decision as to who I believe, but I will report to you all, this is what the different witnesses said about this particular fact, if there is a disagreement on a fact. Thank you. And a follow-up question. Will you be making findings of fact on things like excessive use of force? Um, that is something that is still in discussion and part of the reason for the delay as it pertains to the internal investigation that the village manager just discussed and as to w what is the scope of, of our investigation. So. In answer to your question at this point, I don't know. And um, just one comment, it, I do sympathize with the time it takes. I, I am struggling with that myself. One body cam can take four hours to analyze. Yeah. I get it. Um, you do have one key witness that we're not going to be able to talk to, and that's Marianne McQueen, because her trial is, I believe it's set for March 6th or 8th. So I don't know how that figures in, but uh, to me, she's a key person to talk to before a report is finalized. But there's probably parts of your report that could be released before you talk to her. So thank you very much. Thank you. Athena. Um, Athena Fannin again. Uh, Jennifer asked, um, what were the officers thinking? And um, that brought to mind two, two thoughts. If you go down to the county courthouse, Xenia Municipal and Greene County Courthouse, you can get the public records that have all of their reports. And they detail very clearly in there why they did what they did, at least for the report. Now, for the investigation, he's asking questions that we can't ask. That's information that, that I, I think does provide value to the investigation. But if you're curious, what their reasoning was, I encourage you to go down and get those records. I do have them, I just, I haven't been able to get them online for people yet. Um, and then that brings me to my second thought, which is I know people are really concerned about the cost. Um, I, I also am worried about dragging it on so that interest wanes and then things don't happen. But I also believe that the value of the investigation depends on <clears throat> what it's for. If it's just to tell us what happened on New Year's Eve, there's a lot of information out there. But if we're going to look at some, if we're going to get some information on some systemic change, I would suggest that if we truncate these costs, we're going to pay them out and more in the future because this is going to keep happening. We're going to pay a whole lot more over the coming years reinvestigating or paying out lawsuits or different things. So if it's just for New Year's Eve, 
perhaps we can truncate or perhaps we can do summaries, but if we're really looking at a systemic thing, if we're really trying to get behind the scenes, we need to do it right now or we're not going to save ourselves any money. Anyone else? Um, I, this might be a good time to um, ask Chief Carlson to speak about um, the work he's doing um, so far as chief. It's been two weeks. Is that a week? Yes. <laughs> First of all, I have to say. Would it, I was, do you want to come? I wonder if you should come up here. At least take one of those loose and face the crowd. Yeah, there you go. I have to say, coming in, I was very nervous. And after seeing your faces, the people that have taken me into the community and their hearts, I might just break into song right now. <laughs> um, I got a couple, thi a couple things that I'd like to read to you just so I say them correctly. But, you know, the message that I, I gave to Patty and Council when I first started talking, the dialogue opened about, you know, me taking this position. My attitude, I believe that it starts at the top, and I'm bringing a simple and positive plan of action. We as peace officers must change our approach in dealing in all situations. When we stray from our duty to protect and serve, focusing only on enforcement, we sever the bond that so many good officers have previously established. Dennis Snipper made a good point when he, he signed on with Jim McKee not too long ago. <laughs> Jim said, we welcome you here. We do things a little bit differently. If you don't like it, I'll get the door for you on your way out. That sounds a little harsh, but it's the attitude that we really need to start to change things here. Um, once the crew starts to see how I behave, perform, what my expectations are, it will trickle down. My message is simple and clear. We are peace officers. We're public servants sworn to protect and serve the community. We will treat every person we encounter with dignity. We will give the person the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. We will seek a peaceful resolution to the situation using force only as an absolute last resort. We shall keep the safety of the community in mind at all times. It's pretty simple. After listening to some of you tonight, Anita, Karen, um, and all of you, I'd like to say from the bottom of my heart, I'm very sorry about how we made you feel New Year's Eve. I see some of my... I've got some of my high school homies here in the crowd, some things that... Great to see you guys here. Um, some things that I have done in the short time, I've met with uh, numerous students, spent a couple hours with some very dynamic high school students that have wonderful ideas. We're going to be having, uh, it'll be in the paper, I think it's March 11th, uh, community, police, and high school kind of fun day at the, at the school. There'll be contests and food, and um, we'll all be in casual uh, apparel, so they get to see us kind of as who we are, and I think that's important. Any ideas are welcome. I have an open door policy. I'd really like it if any of you could come anytime and just ask if the chief's in and I'll make time and, and I'd like to talk with you so you can see what direction we're heading in. Uh, I've met with some of the local churches um, because I believe their positive interaction with the community is, is a huge assistance to what we're trying to do here. Um, I've got some great staff that, that are helping out tremendously. Uh, Officer Meister is going to be uh, appointed as OIC. We're going to see uh, some new things happening in the department. Um, Dennis Nipper has been a huge support and help for me and will continue to be so. And uh, just come see me anytime. Thanks, Chief. I think uh, Patty made a good decision on that one, a uh, timely decision, and it, I think it really makes our job here 
moving forward um, a little bit more relaxed. Um, but we still have a lot of work to do. Um, Patty wanted to say something also. Yes, it was uh, Shonda. Where is Shonda? Um, I believe it was Shonda that asked what was the, what type of communications were we trying to initiate? And I am moving forward with my um, village mediation, community police relations uh, initiative, which is um, going to start with the officers, but then we'll also um, begin to include community members in that, and that will continue as uh, a very long-term, if not permanent, program. And it's with the help of, I saw John Gudgel here earlier, John Gudgel, uh, Linda Radowski, and Catherine Hitchcock, who is also over there by John. And we uh, have met and had a preliminary planning meeting, and uh, we're ready to get moving on that initiative as well. Um, so that is also moving forward to help increase and, and make more effective the communications between the department and the community. Thanks, Patty. Um, Council, um, where do we want to go next? I think, you know, I, and, and I agree, that, uh, citizens are right. I mean, there, there does need to be a deadline here. There needs to be a stop point um, for everyone concerned. Um, and, and it's possible, um, maybe we can divide this report into two. Maybe we can have a, a, an initial report about the events of the night, a very factual, fact-based report on the events of the night that um, are reflected from some of the work that's already been done um, that could come sooner? Is that something that could potentially happen, Dave? I, I think that's a, uh, an idea that uh, is worth exploring, and I don't see why. And why don't I uh, talk to the village manager about, uh, about that? and. Um, and where the rest of uh, her investigation is going and, and how we can be complementary in that regard. Because that, that may make some sense to, uh, to, to bring at least part of this to some finality. Our next regular council meeting is Tuesday, next Tuesday the 21st, um, because of the President's Day holiday. So if, if we will know, hopefully we'll know in the next couple of days if we're, gonna, if we're going to have anything um, presented at that meeting. Um, that would be that would be something that would be nice. I mean, we're we are very limited um, as far as meetings are concerned, and you know we're trying to do these on Monday nights. Um, although we could certainly call a special meeting on another night, um, but we're trying to keep within um, our typical schedule just so that it's it's easy for for all of us and for staff and for um, uh, citizens to attend. Any other comments? What? Any in regards thoughts? in regards to the. Uh, the report, uh, I'm wondering if we could try to wrap things up by our next council meeting, uh, which is next Tuesday. And I know uh, if that were the case, if we were able to do that, how would we get the message out to citizens so that those who really wanted to be here could attend? I mean, do you think that's possible, Karen? I, the, the entire report, I think it might be, that might be a stretch. Dave, would you? Uh, all, all I can tell you is we will endeavor to do our best. And uh, if you tell me the 21st, again, I, I, want, I want to reserve that one piece about talking with Patty about uh, the length, breadth, and scope of, of what Council wants us to do, but um, uh, we can certainly, if it's not f totally exhaustive, I think we'll certainly be in a position to give um, uh, 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 as much as we uh, we can at that point. Karen, I'd I'd like to make a suggestion that we. I don't, I, I don't want to put these folks again in the position of expecting something. Expecting and something and then Dave having to rush and not give them the quality document that I think that they deserve. 
And so I'm, I'm wondering if we could make it the week after. March 6th? The, the, well, <coughs> either not March 6th, but potentially the week of the 27th. I know that you're- I'm out of town person. almost all, all that week. The whole week. Um, <coughs> Me, me too. I'll be out of town. The one thing that we do have at council on the 6th that we cannot reschedule is the, the broadband presentation, but that's 20 minutes. And we, right, and we can, we can truncate the rest of the, of the meeting Correct. if we need to. So, I, I, just don't, I just don't want to be back in the position that we're in this evening with everyone expecting a finalized document and, and then it not being what we hope it to be. But if the, if the report is ready, the week of the 27th, it can be it published. Can, it can be released, yes. So what we will do is um, leave it that I will have to communicate. I mean, it, this we can't make a decision. Um, Patty and Dave will need to decide. I think that council is definitely communicating that the 21st is um, desirable. Um, to have the report released the week of the 27th with presentation on March 6th is probably the last date that we would um, that we would want to have it that we would like to have everything concluded by March 6th. At least with Dave's at least with Dave's current Correct. report that he's doing. Correct. The the disciplinary investigation will not likely not be done in the same period of time. Yes. Can I make a suggestion? If I was managing this, which I'm not, I thank God, I would have somebody from you go to the lawyers and come out with a summary of where they are now. I'd go to their office and look at everything they have and say, okay, this is, looks good, this doesn't look good, why are you wasting your time on this? How much is this costing us? Where are we going with this? And I'd do that, I'd have I would manage the situation and not let them totally manage it, okay? That's my suggestion. John? Um, I'm sorry if this isn't exactly on topic, but rather it goes back to um, the question that was raised by Jennifer Berman about why the um, police decided to break up the, the event, and Athena's mentioned that the police narrative supplements are out. Um, I did just pub, um, post them to my, uh, to my Facebook page, um, a link to a public um, Google Drive, some PDFs. Anyway, but um, here's what uh, Officer Howley um, said. Uh, it's one small bit from his narrative supplement, but if you read the whole thing, it gives you an even better idea. But he said that um, due to the overwhelming size of the crowd, the levels of purported intoxication observed, the insidious statements that were being made about police officers, and the lack of manpower, it was determined that it would be best to attempt to clear the crowd out earlier than had been done in previous years. Therefore, at approximately 2010, um, sorry, 1210, I directed the officers on scene to begin the predetermined plan of activating our overhead patrol lights on the marked patrol cars and attempt to clear the persons from the street. Um, so I, I hope that that's like at least some useful information so that people aren't completely frustrated. Um. Oh yeah, my name is John Hempfling. <laughs> I did want to make a comment. Um, I tried to make this comment, uh, maybe not totally clearly, at the last council meeting uh, when Patty mentioned the mediation process that she's initiated with our police department and with the idea that, ult that eventually they would be meeting with citizens. And I mentioned at the time that I thought it was extremely important that the first people that we're talking to the police, and I don't know how you make it happen, because they're the people that Bob Farrar was, uh, Bill Farrar was mentioning earlier, the people who are not white middle class people, older people, um, who generally experience police officers as people who they can go to for help. They <clears throat> often experience police officers as people who do not help them and who are sometimes a danger or a threat to them and who they feel viewed maybe are viewed as potential criminals 
it's kind of a harsh way to put it, but um, young people, people, you know, poorer people, people of color, uh, especially younger people of color, often experience police officers with a lot of trepidation. And if we're going to do this reach out to the community, I think we need to start reaching out there because it actually worsens the problem almost if you're middle class white older people have this really great relationship with the police and then it's really hard to understand what's wrong with the rest of you who are having such a problem so i think we need to really be thoughtful about how we do that process and how do you actually get you know people who feel distrustful to engage and it's not an easy solution but it's just something to think about to be thinking about in this i think Thanks, Judith. And I'm, I was happy to hear um, some of Chief's ideas of, it sounds like he's already started to reach out to the high school, and I think yeah. that's important. Um, yeah. And certainly the students um, came, came to us with a lot of ideas, um, so I think that's great that they're engaged. Oh, sorry, Pat. That's okay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say Pat DeWeese again, and the Village Justice System Task Force, which is open to the public, will be meeting tomorrow at 7, and certainly welcome people to come to the meeting and the four working groups. And again, the task force is not, was not established in response to the critical incident of New Year's Eve. It was established months before that to sort of take a really big picture and look at trends both nationally, regionally, and locally, and look at things that we have some concern about and what are some ways we might be um, addressing that. So we're also inviting members of the public who have an interest to join one of the working groups if they would like to. So you might come tomorrow night and listen into that. Where is the meeting? Oh, it's in the council, council meeting. Thank you. Oh. Council, council chambers. Chambers. Yes. chambers at 7. Yeah. And we've really been, we have benefited by just so much good thinking, creative ideas, and thoughtful responses from the community. So. Thanks, Pat. Uh, anyone else you want to? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a comment. Um, and it, it kind of is in relation to some of the things Pat just mentioned, but in general, some other comments I heard. Um, I want to be honest that my focus is not on this investigative report, but it is on the things that are happening that uh, uh, Chief Carlson is doing. And I hear every day somebody say, I just met with the chief or I met with one of our officers and I see things changing. I'm focused on the disciplinary investigation. That is very important to me. And so while I agree that we need to complete this piece because we've gone down this road and we do need to be careful because it does affect uh, certain people's lives and futures uh, that are you know, part of that investigation, uh, at the same time, that's not where my focus is, and I think that's what we need to be thinking overall, is how do we solve these bigger problems that the Justice System Task Force is looking at, and that other groups like the 365 Project is looking at, that council and uh, the police department and our village manager is looking very carefully at. And uh, I mean, I, I tend to agree with some things I heard that uh, Dan and Dave said, although not to the extreme. I, I think that um, what is well documented is we know that something went terribly wrong and we are addressing solving that. And um, I certainly support wrapping up this investigative, investigative piece and again focusing on real solutions that are going to make a difference in our department and for the community. Thanks, Brian. Anyone else? So we're so we're looking at you, Dave. Let's just to, to conclude this. Dave and Patty will be talking about schedule. Council is looking at either um, if something hopefully by the 21st, if not the 21st, um, a written report to be released sometime the week of the 27th with a formal presentation on March 6th. I heard loud and clear. Thank you. Somebody mentioned the word cap. <laughs> March 6th. Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, is the, is the, or if not sooner. So. 
And I, that meeting will probably be in council chambers as opposed to down here um, because it will be a, a regular council meeting with other business. Um, we do have a presentation from uh, SpringsNet. That also, actually, that might be a consideration for having it. Or design nine. Or design nine, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll let you know when the March, where the March 6th meeting will be. Um, it might be here, it might be in council chambers, but you will know. Um, thank you all for attending. Um, thank you all for um, sharing your comments. And I hope you hear that this council is working hard. Um, we're, work, we're putting a lot of hours in, our staff is, and we're working to resolve this. We have a great new police chief who has already gotten us far down the right path. So thank and, you all. And thank you to our village mediators for facilitating tonight. Yes, oh, thank you. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That's